Hi everybody, it's Sandy and I'm here doing the final video in the 24 Tags of Christmas of 2018. Every year I make 24 tags and I give them all away. This is the final video in the series, so if you'd like to qualify for the giveaway, I'll have information on that at the end. I'm using some Lawn Fawn products today. I got the die set and I almost got the stamp set that goes with it that's made for tags, but I decided I wanted a stamp set with more shelf life. And this one is going to be able to make more cards rather than only tags. And I don't make that many tags, believe it or not. So I thought I'll use a different stamp set for this. And I thought I'd also make something caffeinated since it's Saturday and we are in need of jazzing up the weekend. So we're going to do a coffee themed set of tags here. I'm stamping each of the little critters, little, little peoples in the corners. And then I wanted to use the thought bubble. And the Thought Bubble die in this set, in the, the die set, has just the little bottom portion of the, the little Thought Bubble in it. And so what I'm doing is placing them inside the die so I kind of know where it goes, drawing my little outline around it, and then I have it ready for doing the stamping. And I'm going to cut this little stamp because I wanted to say cheers to you, not cheers to you and yours because that won't fit. And I started out thinking I was gonna just put both of these stamps onto the block together, get them lined up and then stamp them both. But when I stamped it on a scratch piece, I realized that cheers and to you are just so far apart. I wanted them snugged together. So I'll show you the difference in what that can do typography wise. So it just feels more united. I'm a typography geek. I was a graphic designer in my working life before I quit to start my own working life business. So I'm kind of a, a type geek. And you can tell here already that Cheers just feels like it's more part of it by the way that it stamps. So look how much nicer it looks when they're tucked in together. There's two mugs in this stamp set and one faces one direction, one faces the other. So of course it works out great for the two little elves to hold their little mugs. And then of course I had room now since I had snugged in my text, I had room to add a little heart onto each one. I'm going to trim down these thought bubbles and the outside of it is gonna fit underneath of the frame, so I'm not really worried about making sure it's straight or anything. But I am going to erase all my pencil lines, and for most of the mediums that you're gonna use, you wanna get rid of those pencil lines before you color. Because now that you've got your stamping in the right location, you don't really need to know about where the rest of the border is. And here I just need to color up far enough that it goes underneath of the thought bubble. And what I wanted to do was actually some rough coloring. I didn't want it to look all perfect because I wanted a distress with pencil. And you're probably thinking, Sandy's crazy. What's she thinking about distressing with pencil? That is a silly idea. Pencil doesn't distress. Well, guess what? It does. And I'm going to show you how. So I wanted to get enough color on here, enough contrast between the background and the little elves so that when I do the distressing, it holds up to all the, the rigors of what I'm going to be doing to it to distress it. And I guess distressing, the word itself indicates that there are some rigors to come in uh, doing the coloring. And I'm using baby oil and a little blending stump to move the color around a little bit. And... Uh, Get, that, get these all finished up. Now you can use all different kinds of colors. I wanted, since it's a coffee themed type of thing and I was gonna use distressy colors, I wanted to make sure I used some colors that fit in that mode. So I didn't wanna use like bright reds and that sort of thing, but you could certainly do them with all different kinds of color combinations. So I have put some adhesive on the back of this and then before I stuck down the top portion, I wanted to make sure I got my thought bubble lined up so that it was going to fit in there perfectly. And bada boom, bada bing, that portion is done. 
just add a little color onto the heart. You can add the green or the brown, uh, whatever color, kind of color that you wanted. And I thought I'd also experiment, maybe see what a different green was going to do. And this is more of a blue green color. Didn't end up liking it all that much, but there you go. It's still a really fun tag in the way that it came out. And when I mixed it with the brown, I was a little happier with it because it kind of brought things back into that, that same kind of colorway a little bit. And a lot of that bright color is not going to show underneath of the thought bubble anyway. So I decided to just proceed and keep going and blend all my color. And again, I'm trying to get enough color on here so that once I start putting the, um, the distressing on with the distress pencil technique that I will show you in a minute, then all of this is going to hold up and it won't end up being just one flat mush of light brown colors, that sort of thing. So now I'm going to stick this little one in here. Again, just put the adhesive on the back, tuck in the thought bubble, and get it lined up just so. Notice that, and I don't know if, if anybody else cares, but the thought bubbles turn toward the person. So there's only one thought bubble. It aims one direction, so I just turn the paper over for the other one. This little guy uh, shows how you can blend with white and then put basically a layer of light color under it and then you can color over top. There's lots of different ways to blend with colored pencil. Lots of this is going to sort of disappear when we get around to doing this distressing section. So I've got a scratch piece and I've colored a, a dark brown on the scratch piece. This does work with different brands of pencil by the way. so. It doesn't matter a whole lot if I'm using Prismacolor here, but you can use anything. And a cotton ball, and I'm picking up pigment with the cotton ball. So the only thing you need is enough color on that scratch piece of paper that you can lift it with the cotton ball and then scrub it onto each one of your portions of your tag. And just you'll you'll be pressing pretty hard to get it to happen. But it's a little more controlled than using things like Distress Ink because for me, I end up getting too heavy with the Distress Ink. So I don't tend to do a whole lot of distressing that way. But look how fun they are. They're so cute and coffee themed. If you were to give someone a coffee mug for Christmas, these would be a really fun little tag to give with it. So if you're interested in qualifying for the giveaway for this or any of the other tags that I've been doing all week long, then go to my blog, leave comments on those posts, and I will be picking people to win and sending out tags for Christmas. I hope you guys enjoyed this series this year. I will see you again next week with more regular videos, and I will talk to you later. Have a really great day.